So in this question, we're given the following information. We're told that an archer shoots an arrow and the height, which is denoted by H and measured in meters, of the arrow above the ground is modeled by a given formula. So we're told that H is going to be equal to 1.8 plus 0.4D minus 0.002D squared, where D is a horizontal distance of the arrow from the archer. And this is also measured in meters and we're told that d is greater than or equal to zero, which makes sense thinking about it in the real world as distance must always be greater than or equal to zero. So we'll now take a look at part a of the question. So we're told that the arrow travels in a vertical plane until it hits the ground. And we're asked to find the horizontal distance traveled by the arrow given this model. So we have our equation here, h is equal to 1.8 plus 0.4d minus 0.0 0 to d squared and we're told that the arrow is going to hit the ground we recall that the horizontal distance is the height from the ground and therefore when it hits the ground we'll have that h is equal to zero so therefore we'll have the following equation taking this down from here and we can say that negative 0 0.002 d squared plus 0.4d plus 1.8 is going to be equal to 0. We can then solve this equation here and find out what d is. So we can't factor this out because it's slightly trickier numbers. So what we can do is make use of the quadratic formula. So we recall that the quadratic formula is an equation that we can use to work out the roots and the solutions of a quadratic function like this. And we know that it is gonna be negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac, and we divide all of that by 2a. So we now need to think, what are a, b, and c going to be? So we know that a is going to be the coefficient of the d squared term. So that's going to be negative 0 0.002. We know that b is going to be the coefficient from the d term. So 0 0.4. And then finally, c is going to be equal to 1.8. So we can then take these values and substitute them into our quadratic formula. So we have negative 0 0.4 plus or minus, then we'll put the square root in at the end, so we'll have 0 0.4, and we square that, and we subtract four lots of negative 0 0.002, and we multiply that by 1.8, and then like I said, we need to remember to take the square root of it, just like this, and then we divide that by 2a. And we know that a is negative 0 0.002. So we put these into our calculator and we have both the positive square root and the negative square root. So we'll get two solutions. So we'll have a positive solution and we'll have a negative solution. So these are d is equal to negative 4.403. And for the negative of the square root term, we have 204.403. However, we know that the solution, which is d is equal to negative 4.403, that, that can't be a solution. That's not a valid solution because d must be greater than zero. So we'll just put in not valid since, since d is less than zero. So therefore we conclude that the answer is going to be that d is equal to 204 meters. Now moving on to part b of this question, we're asked with reference to the model, so that means taking a look at the equation that we're given in the certain circumstances, we're to interpret the significance of the constant 1.8 in the formula. So let's recall that our formula is h is equal to 1.8 plus 0.4d minus 0.002d squared. So we can see from the model 
that 1.8 is the only part of the equation which doesn't have a d variable as part of it. And this means that when d is equal to 0, we'll have that h is equal to 1.8. So we can therefore conclude that 1.8 is the initial height of the arrow above the ground. So we'll now take a look at part c of the question, where we're asked to write our equation for h, and we're asked to write that in the form here, a minus b multiplied by d minus c squared, where a, b, and c are all constants which we need to find. So the first step we need to do here is have a look and think about, is there anything that looks familiar for this equation a minus b, d minus c squared? So one thing that comes to my mind is d minus c squared with a constant on the end. This, this reminds me of completing the square. So we'll just note here that this looks like completing the square. But we do know that this isn't yet in a form which would be entirely easy to, co to complete the square. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite it. So, and we're going to rewrite it as follows. We're going to take a common factor out of negative 0 0.002. So we'll then have the following. We'll have negative 0 0.002 and then we're going to multiply that by d squared minus 200d and then we'll have our 1.8 on the end. So as you can see here we've taken out a common factor of negative 0 0.02 and then it leaves us inside the brackets here d squared minus 200d. So then what we can now do this term inside the bracket here, this is now in the form that we know that we can complete the square. So if we just go over to the side here to complete the square, we know this will be d minus, we have half of negative 200, which is going to be negative 100. And then we have around the brackets, we're going to have that squared. And then we'll subtract 100 squared, which is 10,000. So that's us completing the square of this term here. So what we can then do, and we'll need to be careful with brackets to make sure we're keeping track of where our brackets are and what's being multiplied by what. So we'll keep our negative 0 0.002 on the outside, and then this whole term can be replaced with this term here. So we'll bear in mind we're going to put in big brackets like this just to make things easier. So then in there we'll have d minus 100. Then we'll have small brackets around that. And then we'll take away 10,000. And then we'll close our big brackets. And then we add on our constant from the end there of 1.8. So then the next step for us is going to be to multiply out these brackets. So we'll first have negative 0 0.02 multiplied by our d minus 100 squared. So that will give us negative 0 0.002 d minus 100 squared. And then we're going to have negative 0 0.002 multiplied by negative 10,000, which comes out as positive 20. And then that's us finished with the big brackets. So we then have our constant 1.8 on the end. So we plus 1.8. And then tidying this up. So all we need to do is simplify this by combining these two terms here. So 20 add 1.8. This then leaves us with negative 0 0.002. Lots of d minus 100 squared plus 21.8. Looking back at our question, we have a constant a, and then we have b here multiplying by the bracket, and then we have c inside the bracket. So we can draw the following conclusions such that a is going to be equal to 21.8. We then have that b is going to be equal to the number in front of the bracket. So that's going to be 0 0.002 and then we'll finally have that c is equal to 100. So therefore we conclude that a is equal to 21.8, b is equal to 0 0.002 and c is equal to 100. So now taking a look at part d of this question we're given some further information. So we're told that we have a new model and the formula for this is going to be h is equal 
to 2.1 plus 0.4d minus 0.002d squared and we're asked to find the maximum height of the arrow above the ground. So we have our new model but we're first going to take a look at our previous model which is written out in purple here. So we can see the only difference between the new model and the old model is our constant. We now have 2.1 as opposed to 1.8 from before. And from our knowledge of parabolas, we know that we, for the previous model and the current model, we're going to have a parabola which is shaped like this. So it's going to be a, a sad face parabola since the coefficient in front of the squared term is negative. So as you can see here, this will be the shape of a parabola. So we know from the shape of our parabola and our knowledge of parabolas that the maximum height of the arrow above the ground is going to be the turning point of our parabola. So we can then take the completed the square form, which we have here, bear in mind this is the old model, and we can read off the coordinates of our turning point. So for this old model, the turning point is going to be 100 and the y coordinate is going to be 21.8 because we read from here and from here and we flip the sign of this one. So the turning point is going to be 121.8 and we know that this maximum height is going to be the y coordinate and we recall that this 21.8 was found by doing 1.8 plus 20. So we can now relate this to the new model and we know that this 20 here it is going to stay the same, but our 1.8 is now going to be 2.1. So therefore, the y coordinate of the turning point is going to be equal to 2.1 plus 20. So that means that the maximum height is going to be 20 plus 2.1, which is 22.1 meters. So now taking a look at the second part of question D, we're asked to find the horizontal distance from the archer of the arrow when it's at its maximum height. So we know the equation of our model is 2.1 plus 0.4 D minus 0.002 D squared. And we know that the maximum height is going to be 22.1 meters. So therefore we can set our equation equal to 22.1 and then we can rearrange this and use the quadratic formula to solve for d. We'll have negative 0.002d squared, then we'll add 0.4d, and then we'll have 2.1 minus 22.1, which is equal to negative 20. And that's all equal to zero. So we can now use the quadratic formula and we'll have negative 0.4, plus or minus the square root of 0 0.4 squared minus 4 lots of negative 0, 0, 002 multiplied by negative 20 and we put a square root in and then we're going to divide all of this by 2 lots of negative 0 0.002 so therefore, for positive and negative square root, we have that d is going to be equal to 100 in the positive case and also 100 in the negative case. Therefore, we conclude that d is equal to 100 meters. So now we've completed this question, we're going to take a look and see what marks were on offer. So for question part A, there was three marks on offer. We received our first mark for setting h equal to 0, and then writing the equation as follows. We then receive our second mark for knowing to use a quadratic formula and substituting all of our values in. And then we receive our third and final mark for concluding with the correct answer. Part B of the question was worth one mark and we received this mark for stating that 1.8 is the initial height of the arrow above the ground. Then moving on to part C of the question, this was worth three marks also. We receive our first mark for taking out this common factor of negative 0.002. We then receive the second mark for completing the square. So going from d squared minus 200d down to this term here. d minus 100 squared minus 10,000. 
we then receive a third mark for coming to the correct conclusion with negative 0.02 d minus 100 squared plus 21.8. And then for part d, there was two marks on offer in total. We received our first mark for concluding that the maximum height was 22.1 metres, and then we received our second mark for concluding that the distance was d equals 100 metres.